Welcome back. You're watching Le Breton, Sportsmax's build-up to the Paris Olympic Games. Remember, Sportsmax is your home for Paris 2024. Doesn't matter where in the region you're based, you can watch on the Sportsmax app. You can also use our new feature, casting from your smartphone or tablet to your TV. So download the app today. Now, upgraded to gold in Beijing due to a doping violation by Team Jamaica. Bronze in London, seventh in Rio. Didn't qualify for Tokyo. And here they are again, failing to meet the qualifying standard for Paris. The Trinidad Tobago men's 4x100 meter relay team of Gerard Elcock, Devin Augustine, uh, Jonathan Farina, and Kyle Groh needing to surpass 38.30 seconds for a spot at Paris 2024. They gave qualification one final attempt at their uh, National Junior and Senior Track and Field Championships at the Hayes de Crawford Stadium, but uh, could only manage a time of 38.46 seconds. The team had earlier in May failed to finish their heat at the World Relays in the Bahamas. At that time, they were tied for the 16th and final qualifying spot with the Netherlands, both running 38.30 seconds. However, an updated World Athletics qualifying list saw Trinidad and Tobago slipped to 17th position with the Netherlands remaining in 16th uh, World Athletic State at the times were broken down to the thousands of a second, resulting in TNT's slip. Dexter Forzin, General Secretary of the National Association of Athletics Administrations of Trinidad and Tobago, join us now for this discussion. And uh, welcome to Le Baton, uh, Sir Dexter. How are you doing? Um, not too bad. Um, pleasant good afternoon, and it's a pleasure to be on your show this afternoon. All right, um, let, let's go over a couple of timelines here because I know it would have been a, a, a bit of a seesaw in terms of what you've been through over the last few weeks in terms of uh, qualification and how you wanted to qualify. But the final bit of hurdle where uh, you thought you were in the final qualification spot, but you ended up missing out due to uh, being a thousandth of a second uh, slower Talk to me about that process. How did you come by that information? Because what we're hearing from the Trinidad Tobago camp is that you were informed late by World Athletics about that situation. Okay, so let's take it post um, Bahamas relays, where all teams was vying for automatic qualification to Paris. Um, following Bahamas, we were listed as number 16, missing out on an automatic 14 spot. Um, Netherlands were listed as 17, and that was from the period May the 6th to June the 20th. During that period, ever so often, almost every day, or when we, we looked at what is happening around the world, and especially when Netherlands is concerned, when they will be competing next, and we were paying attention to the rankings. The rankings remained, as I said, up until the 20, 20th of June. And when we saw that we were placed at number 17, we wrote World Athletics asking for an explanation. They wrote back and said that on the 19th, um, World Athletics had what you call a member federation session where they discussed tying tie breakers and stuff. And they went back to the results of the CAC games, which had us 38-30, and where Netherlands performed in April, and the went back to the results and they were able to separate both Trinidad and Tobago and Netherlands by a hundredth of a second. But a thousand? Was never... A thousand of a second, you mean? A thousand of a second, sorry. Yeah. But that wasn't the issue for us because at no point in time, we were listed as Thai with Netherlands, even though we had the same time. We were 16th and Netherlands 17th. Hmm. So we would imagine before World Athletics would have done the ranking, they would have, have to separate the, 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 play, the time to in, in order to put Trinidad and Tobago 16 and Netherlands 17. However, they claim it was a tie. So that is where we are today. We wrote several, we, 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 we expressed our disappointment and objection to what took place. Um, as you rightly said, our, our team, we won't satisfy sitting down at 16. So we were trying to better that time, but we weren't trying to break any type with, with Netherlands. All we were trying to do is to better our performance from 16 to maybe 15. But it was very surprising to us when we learned on the 20th of June that we were actually tied all the while with Netherlands. And what did that mean for you then in, in, in hearing that? Well, what that meant is that 
we have to now reorganize and try to put um how rush the process in terms of getting the guys to try and better that time at the Guyana Guyana meet um held on the 18th and then we came up with a plan to compete at the championships but had we known that we were tied from the 6th of May to the 20th of June we would have definitely put different things in place in order to break the tie but not and, and, and as I said we were just trying to better our number 16 position what would you have done so that, say, say that again. what would you have done differently well, well certainly we would have to meet with our Olympic committee and we would have had to come up with a different strategy in terms of how do we go ahead and break the tie with Netherlands and and to me it put us at a disadvantage when we only told on the 20th of June that we were actually tied from the 6th of May which was not listed on the rankings but um I think more than that there seems to be a lot going on with regards to the four by one relay because as you know um Botswana recorded 38 19 a couple of weeks ago and that time has never been ratified right and they, they, they presently are not on the on the top yeah 16. they were taken out so, right yeah so even that I think is some concern because they competed at our area championships and if if one performance is um suspicious then that whole championship should be suspicious as well with all the performance and I would imagine individuals from that championships would have qualified for the for the Olympics so that is where we are today Dexter, your federation was, uh, un well, they, you were informed by World Athletics on the 20th of June, you said, and then seven days later, eight days later, you would have had your national championships coming up. The plan then was to, of course, have an invitational four by one relay for the men. How did you come about uh, getting these teams together to try and qualify and make that qualifying mark because I see that Gerald Elcock was the only one from the original team that went to World Relays that was available. What happened to the other three? Right, so injuries. Out of the 100 meters final, three of the two of the guys who were on that team from World Relays to then, they got injured. Um, so again, it, 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 it put us in a disadvantage. I mean, the same story I would imagine with Jamaica. When you try to, 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 to put on an event like that within your championships, it will always be a challenge because you're speaking about the guys need to be fresh. I mean, you can adjust the schedule as much as you can, but at the end of the day, they competed and injuries and this type of thing can happen, which happened. So that is the reason why um, there was some omission from the original team at our championships. So to answer your question, it was difficult to put together a quartet to try and, 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 and be the 30 30 because one of the guys who ran um, Kyle Grio, he was never factored in the 4x4 relay for the entire season. Are, are you planning to go to the Code of Arbitration for Sport? Um, at, at this stage, I haven't seen any efforts on our part to go that way. Of course, you know, that, that requires um, funding and the right type of representation. However, what I can tell you, that our area representatives, they have all been privy to the situation. They have been CC'd in all the emails. And I would imagine, well, it, it may be too late now, but certainly they are the ones to really voice our, our, our objection. In, 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 in terms of the support that you would have received from the general public in Trinidad and Tobago, what are they saying and, and what's the message that's being relayed uh, to you? Because I, I saw an article where um, someone was uh, ridiculing the association from not being proactive. Well, I haven't seen I haven't seen that to start with, but we, but I can tell you from the public, there was general support towards the team in terms of trying to, to, to make it into the, to, to the top 16. But I don't think the, well, I can tell you the Federation have been very proactive, but I, and again, I can also make the comparison to your, your host country, Jamaica, when there's events like the World Relays, it's very early in the season, and some of the athletes are available and others are not. We. We didn't have our best team at Bahamas because one of our top performers at that time wasn't made available by his school to compete in Bahamas. So I think the Federation, not I think, I know the Federation would have done all in its power in order to be proactive to, to, to have the teams qualify. Dexter, this is now two consecutive Olympic Games that Trinidad and Tobago will not feature in the men's 4x1 100 meter relay. What is the contingency plan now going forward for the next four years when we hit Los Angeles? Are you going to work with the under 20s who just performed well at 
Karifta. Well, to be fair, um, again, these type of um, plans have to be well thought out. And again, we, even though it's with track and field we're speaking about, we need all stakeholders to be on board, the Olympic Committee, the government, everybody, to play their part in order for us to have continuity. Because as you rightfully said, Trinidad and Tobago has a rich history with regards to meddling at the Olympics, whether upgraded or not. But um, our 4x1, our 4x4 has been on the podium for several international championships, including the Olympics. So yes, definitely we have a bright future with regards to the youngsters who you would have seen at Carifta and who is heading to the World Juniors. And, and, and that, can be the, that cannot be the end there. So there needs to be a holistic plan moving forward. Um, this year is a, a kind of dicey year for this present board of the entry is because elections will be held in November and we don't know the outcome of the elections as to how that will, will, will foster for the future of track and field. But certainly, yes, is a, is a concern for us, not having a team in the 4 by one for another Olympics. Dexter, thank you so much for joining us here on Le Boton. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. And thank you for having me. Yeah, that's Dexter voicing the general secretary there from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Donald, this is a very interesting development in this. Yeah, um, and, and I'm a little bit disappointed for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, you know, I, I know that Jamaica takes its track and field seriously, and, and, and of course uh, there, there is a, a, a huge sector of people in Trinidad and Tobago that, that um, are passionate about it as well. But, but in looking at this, I realized that there wasn't a lot of outcry or even support online in regards to what's been happening uh, with uh, this particular issue. Um, and yeah, that just just missing. Look how Jamaicans have reacted to uh, Jamaica not making yeah. the four by four um, relays. And I, I just think it's just a matter of you know easy come easy go as far as Trinidad and Tobago is concerned. But um, it, it's it's a scenario that's a little bit disconcerting um, because that's back to back Olympics now that they won't be able to to take part in the four by ones. And um, as you rightfully say, um, let's see what happens in, in, in four years' time. But this is off the back of what they did so well at the Curve of the Games exactly. in exactly. stopping yeah. Jamaica from getting the clean sweep and, in the sprint and, and this is why so many people that I've spoken to are a little bit disappointed uh, that they, the Trinidad and Tobago will not feature at the Olympic Games because I have spoken to some Trinidadians who are underground and they are disappointed about the fact that they are not going to have another team yet again mm -hmm. at another Olympic Games. What can we expect from them in Los Angeles? Of course, we'll wait and see how things go. All right, we'll take a break. Back with more after this. Stay with us.